Welcome back to the show. We've had lots of great soccer highlights so far in the program and we'll continue that streak with the Tier 1 Championship match in Senior Boys Soccer with De La Salle battling it out with St. Francis Xavier. Now these two teams were fairly even matched but heading into this one the defense for both sides were trending in a different direction. St. Francis Xavier hadn't allowed a goal in their last three games. De La Salle had allowed a goal one in each of their last three games and if St. Francis Xavier could keep their streak going they'd find themselves in the championship circle. Number 13, Benson Fazil opened the game for De La Salle, missing a header in the box over the San Effects goal. Number 12, Hughes Nisengiumva, now found himself in a scoring position for his Cavaliers, only to be stopped by the San Effects keeper. Number 11, Zachariah Abdul Wahab crossed a lofted ball into the De La Salle box, only to be punched away by goalkeeper John Eric Nimari Ba of the Cavaliers. Number 15, Gilles Mejigo of De La Salle won a header only to be turned aside once more, preserving the 0-0 deadlock. As extra time began, number 3, Lejume Gatame missed the first valuable chance to win for the Cavaliers. De La Salle was then awarded a free kick. Standing over was number 6, Amadou Turpin. As he whipped the ball into the area, it was snatched up by San Effects keeper. As San Effects began to attack, one of their players slipped and coughed up the ball to De La Salle who countered. As the ball spilled to Luchu Gatame, he put a shot wide of the goal. With little time remaining in the extra period, Eder was hit towards the San Effects goal off a corner kick. Just like he has for the whole game, Coyote's keeper kept San Effects in the game with a remarkable save. Penalty kicks were now underway as San Effects' number 10, Scott Mazzotta, slotted the ball into the back netting. It was now Dilla Sal's number 10's turn to step up. Johan Manji, who put the ball straight down the middle, bar down for the equalizer. With a penalty shootout not at a pet 2 2, San Effects' number 13, Dan Atsi, missing, putting De La Salle in the driver's seat to win the championship. The next three shooters scored, putting the game in De La Salle's Emadu Turpin's hand. As he stepped into the ball with ice in his veins, he sent the ball into the left corner, out of the reach of the keeper. With the win, De La Salle sent the fans home happy with a Tier 1 championship. For High School Sports Zone, I'm Liam Knight. We'll move away from boys soccer and over to girls field hockey. The championship matchup has Nepean meeting up with Longford Davidson Heights. Now I mentioned on last week's edition of the program that there had not been very much scoring in the offset division for girls field hockey. That did change in the semifinals a little bit. Nepean scored three goals in their game, Longfield scored two. So, you know, it's a little bit different than what it was, but we'll see if this offensive output could continue in the championship matchup. Longfield Davidson Heights number 14, Angela J, had the first scoring chance of the game as she found the ball right in front of the Nepean net, but before she could control the ball, it was kicked away by the Nepean goalie. Nepean's number 20, Kalia Spooner, tried to pass it to her teammate in front of the net. It was broken up by a strong defensive play by the Ravens number 31, Emma Adams, still in the score. Nepean kept applying the pressure as Jaden Alp found number 6, Jeff Petrolia, but her shot was tipped by the LDH defense and went wide of the net. Late in the half, the Ravens had some nice passing and close, but number 44, Julia Bailey's shot, was kicked away by Nepean's goalie to keep the game scoreless. In the second half, Nepean's Pertolia let go a big shot, but it was knocked away by the LDH Fender before it reached the net. Not long after, Nepean's number 20, Kalia Spooner, shot from in close, and the ball bounced off goalie's pad into the net to give the Knights a one thing lead. Nepean tried to extend their lead as number 11, Darian Olford, took the hard pass and shot on net but the LDH goalie kicked it away. There would be no other scoring as Nepean won the girls' field hockey championship with 1-0 victory over LDH. For High School Sports Zone, I'm Kyle Waddell. I was hoping for more goals, but I'm sure the Knights were comfortable with a 1-0 victory over Longfields. Congratulations to them on taking home the offset of Indian Girls Field Hockey Championship. Move over to Tier 2 Championship now in Girls Field Hockey. And in this division, offense is no problem. Both AY Jackson and Woodruff, the teams who are meeting up in the championship matchup, have been stellar so far in offense this season. It's been defense that's been the problem, and AY definitely has the better defensive side hand in any of this, giving them the distinct advantage. In girls tier 2 field hockey, Woodruff picked the right time to get hot as brought a four game winning streak into the championship game against A.Y. Jackson. A.Y. Jackson capitalized right off the gates and number 1 Laura Senecal scored the first goal of the game making the score 1-0 for the Blue Jays. A.Y. kept the pressure on as they forced Woodruff's goaltender to make a big kick save to keep the score at 1-0 for the Blue Jays. 
Woodruff's goaltender Summer Feitch Powell was forced to make save after save again and keep the ball out of the net for the Tigers. A.Y. Jackson's goaltender Chelsea Filler had to make a kick save of her own at the end of the first half, keeping the score at 1 0 for A.Y. Jackson. Blue Jays scored early again in the second half as number 13 Rachel Provan put the ball past Woodruff's goaltender to make the score 2 0 for A.Y. Jackson. A.Y. Jackson goalie Chelsea Filler then made a nice save for the Blue Jays, stopping the ball from going into the net with her pat, keeping the 2 0 lead. Number 13, Rach Provan of A.Y. Jackson scored her second goal of the game, scoring off Woodruff's defender to push a lead to 3 0 for the Blue Jays. And with little time left in the game, A.Y. Jackson's goalie Chelsea Filler kept the shutout alive with a nice save to keep the score 3 0. And the A.Y. Jackson Blue Jays won the game and took championship with them, shutting out the Woodruff Tigers 3 0. For High School Sports Zone, I'm Ryan Taylor. We've got a big Western Conference matchup in New Girls Offset Division basketball with Longfield's Davidson Heights meeting up with St. Francis Xavier. Now, LDH comes into this game with a 4 and 3 record. St. FX has got a 3 and 3 record. With a victory, St. FX would push themselves into a tie with LDH. LDH gets victory. They find themselves really ahead of the pack in Western Conference and to show themselves home court heading into the playoffs. Two teams hoping to stay near the top. The senior girls basketball offset division hit the court as St. Francis Xavier met Longsfield Davidson Heights. Off the opening tip off, Longsfield Davidson Heights number 33 Elliott hit a three pointer to give the Ravens an early 3 0 lead. St. Francis Xavier's number 12 Lejo grabbed the offensive rebound and got the basket and cut LDH's lead to 8 4. LDH led 9 4 after the first quarter. In the second quarter, Coyotes number two, Ibeto, hit an open jumper to give her team the 14 to 11 lead. Longfield Davidson Heights number 14, Clayson, made a nice pump fake and drove in for the layup. Cut St. Francis Xavier's lead at 14 to 13. St. Francis Xavier's number 14, Vlyn Joseph, drove to the basket and got the layup to give her team a 20 to 18 lead at recess. In the second half, Coyotes number 12, Leggio, found at number 10, Dempensi, for a three pointer to extend the lead to 26 21. Lejeu again with the steal found teammate number 10, Depensi, who hit the layup to extend the lead to 30 to 21. Ravens number 14, Cleason, stole the ball and got the shot off, cutting the lead to 30 to 23. Longsfield Davidson Heights number 33, Elliott, pulled off a nice spin move and got the basket, making it 30 25 St. Francis Xavier. Elliott again stole the ball and got the layup, cutting St. FX's lead to 30 to 29. Coyotes number 10, Dempensey, found number 14, Vlyn Joseph, who hit the open jumper to give St. FX the lead at 36-34. Late in the game, Ravens number 14, Clayton, hit the contested three-pointer to give LDH a 39-36 lead. Longsville Davidson Heights won 40-36. For High School Sports Zone, I'm Kyle Waddell. We'll have more basketball action after the break, and we'll take a look at the girls' tier one division. 